In this episode of Microcast, we're talking about the different options you have for connecting to your Onion Omega. We'll cover connections through the browser, SSH, as well as serial over USB. The first and by far the easiest way to connect to your Omega is via the web interface. Now to be able to do that, your Omega has to be either connected to your home network or needs to be in access point mode. So I'll show you this first one. If you come up here and you click on your Wi-Fi connections, you'll see I have this Omega-1ACD. If you have not changed this from the factory default, you should see this. You may not see 1ACD, you'll probably see Omega-some other four digits, but that is your Omega being an access point. You can click on that, it will connect you directly to it, give you an IP address, and then you can use the web interface to connect straight to it. Now, just a quick note on this, out of the box, that AP mode, like I said, is enabled, and it also has a known username and password, root and onioneer. And for security reasons, I would definitely recommend that you either change the SSID so it's not so obvious, but definitely change the username and password. So once you have your Omega configured, it's not just wide open as well as connected to your home network. Definitely a security issue there, but really smooth for setting things up. I definitely like the concept of having the access point there. So you can either connect to this, and in my case, my Omega is already connected to my home network, uh, the SIDnet here. And so all we need to do in this case is grab a browser window and pull one over. And we'll just type in omega1, in my case, dash 1acd.local, and hit enter. And I'm connected to my you know, omega. I've got my username and password in there. Go ahead and log in. And it brings up the dashboard that we are familiar with. So that's the first way to connect to it. And again, you either have to have your omega connected to your home network for that, or connect to it through the access point mode. The next option that you have for connecting to your Omega is via SSH. Now, just to be clear, for this to work, your Omega has to already be configured to connect to your local network. And the way we do this is just by typing in SSH space, the username, in our case, we're using root, at the address of your Omega. In my case, that's omega-1acd.local. Remember the dash, the four digits after the dash may be different in your case. We'll hit enter there. And it's going to prompt me for my password. And I'll go ahead and enter that. And that takes me into the shell. That's great. Now, we can save ourselves a little bit of time by not having to enter the password every time. And let me show you how to do that. We'll go ahead and exit out of here. And what we need to do is take our public key from our local machine and put it onto the Omega. Now, if you're not sure what a public key is, I can link up some uh, documentation below for what that means and how to create one. But I'm gonna assume for the sake of this video that you already have one. And it's located normally in your SSH folder. So if we do an ls on my home directory dot SSH, you can see I have an id underscore RSA and id underscore RSA dot pub. That's my public key. And what we need to do is get that public key onto our Omega and then it won't prompt us for the password anymore. And the quickest way to do that is using a utility called SCP. It's just a file transfer utility. And the syntax for that is just SCP space, the file that we wanna copy in our case, it's this ID underscore RSA pub and then our remote server. In our case, that's going to be the username first, root at omega-1acd.local, and then you're gonna do a, a colon, and then the path on the local machine where you wanna copy the file. So the place that we need to put this on the omega is forward slash etc forward slash drop bear forward slash the name of the file, which is authorized underscore keys, just like that. We'll go ahead and hit enter. It's going to prompt us for our password again. So we'll enter that and it copied the file for us. Now, if we try and run that SSH command again, you'll notice that it will not prompt us for the password. It's just gonna launch right into the shell, just like that. 
So that's how you configure SSH connections for your Onion Omega. The last way that I wanna show you how to connect to your Onion Omega is serial over USB. Now this is super useful. The, the first two methods that I've shown you are the preferred way of doing this, but you may run into a scenario where for some reason the access point uh, capability is shut down on your Omega so you can't connect directly to it and the credentials changed on your network and your Onion Omega can't connect to your local network. Now this is the classic chicken and egg Internet of Things problem where you need the Omega to connect to something so that you can give it settings but you can't give it settings until you can connect to it. So that's where connecting to it via serial is helpful when it cannot connect to your home network and you need a way to get in to reconfigure the Wi-Fi so that it can connect normally. And so let me show you how to do that. The first thing that you're gonna to need to do is download a driver, the serial driver. Now to save you the time of me showing you that, I just I have it downloaded here for my Mac. I'm going to double click on this and then I'm going to mount the DMG. That's off on another screen here. And I'll show you when I double click on that mounted volume. This is the window that I get. I'm gonna double click on the package. And that is the screen that we will see. We'll just go ahead and hit continue. Accept the license. That's gonna go ahead and install for us. And what this will allow us to do is communicate with the Omega over our USB connection. Now that that's installed, we'll go ahead and close this. And the way we're gonna connect our Omega here is you're gonna connect a USB cable to the micro USB port, the same one that you powered over, directly into your computer. And now that we have the drivers installed for that, we should be able to see it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close these and pull in the terminal window here. And the command that I'm gonna type is ls forward slash dev slash tty dot star. And this is going to list out the serial devices connect. Now because of the scheme that I have in my shell here, you're gonna see that this is kind of hard to read. So to help out with that, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna pipe the output of this command to a file called devices.txt and then I'll just cat that to show you. So th this is this yellow up here, it's really hard to read, but uh, the same output is listed right here. It's nice and readable. We've got this Bluetooth thing coming, my iPhone, and then this slab underscore USB to UART. That is our Onion Omega. And the way that we are gonna connect to that on our Mac is using screen. Now these instructions are different but very similar on Windows and Linux. You'll download a driver. In the case of Windows and Linux, it's just a different driver than the one we downloaded. And then on Linux, you can do screen like we're gonna do here. And then on Windows, you would use something like PuTTY to connect over a COM port. So if you have any questions about that, shoot me an email if you're having trouble on another platform and I can help you through that. So we'll go ahead and do screen space that dev tty slab underscore USB to UART. And then we need to give it a baud rate, which in our case is 115,200. And we'll hit enter. And now this takes us into a terminal that's connected to our Omega. It looks like it's blank. You hit enter one more time and that brings you into the Omega shell. Just as if we were SSH'd into it or from the terminal program, uh, the terminal app, from within the, the web app. So, and so from here, like I said, I'm assuming you would need this in the case of not your onion can't, your, your Omega can't connect to your local Wi Fi, so you need to uh, fix that. So, the way that you can do that once you're here is just through a Wi Fi setup. Just run this command, you hit enter, and then it's going to walk you through a command line uh, program here to configure your Wi Fi. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit exit because mine is connected already. And then once you're done going through that, there's also a handy little command you can run here to test that and it's just same command, it's Wi-Fi setup, but you pass in an argument of dash, uh, not 
connection check. Check connection. And what this is going to do is try to ping one of the uh, Onion servers, see if it can get a 200 response back and let you know. So we'll hit enter there. We'll say checking internet connection and internet connection successful done. Now, if you're not familiar with screen, there's a special keyboard shortcut that helps you get out of this back to the command or terminal prompt on your local machine. And you're going to hold down the control key and press A followed by K. And I'll say really kill this window. Say yes. And that brings you back out. And that covers the different ways that you can connect to your Onion Omega. You have several options available to you depending on the situation that you find yourself in. Uh, again, connecting through the web browser is definitely going to be the easiest, but you may find that connecting over serial is necessary for what you're trying to accomplish. Now, if you have any questions on this or you're having some trouble or if there's something that you didn't understand in the video, please just send me an email or put a comment below. I am more than happy to help. And until next time, happy hacking.